Hi everyone. Today we're going to standardize our KMNO4 solution using the primary standard sodium oxalate. So the sodium oxalate was measured out using the analytical balance and the mass I used was 0 0.1647 grams. I decided to use this amount based on calculation number two from your redox titration lab. I wanted an estimate of about how much sodium oxalate would I have to use in order to use about 25 milliliters of my KMNO4 solution. So here's our KMNO4 solution, which we made up in our last video. Its concentration is approximately 0.02 molar, and the purpose of today's experiment is to determine its exact concentration. So following instructions 8 through 15 in the lab handout, okay? So the first thing we're going to do to, with our sodium oxalate is to add about 200 milliliters of deionized water, which I will get from the deionized water container. Okay, and you can see that, um, you probably can't see it actually, but I can see that most of the powder in there has started to dissolve in the water. And to that, I'm going to add a magnetic stir bar and I'm going to place this on a stir plate, hot plate, um, in order to begin our titration, okay? I also need to add to this 30 milliliters of three molar sulfuric acid. And the three, three molar sulfuric is acid is added because recall that this titration that we're doing is a redox titration in acid. So this is our source of the acid three molar sulfuric. So you're going to take that beaker and place it on our stir plate, which is preheating. And I'm also going to start stirring it. And I'm going to move us a little bit closer here so you can watch what's going on. So right now I'm getting the sodium oxalate to dissolve in the acidic solution. I'm also going to put a thermometer in to monitor the temperature here as I'm heating it. And so this titration that occurs is going to be done between 70 and 90 degrees Celsius. So I have to wait for our solution to get up to that temperature, which is just going to take a couple minutes. And so while that's happening, I'm going to show you my data table, and I'm also going to show you the titration setup. Okay, so first, the titration setup. We took the KMNO4, which was prepared last week um, and stored in the dark, and we filled the burette with the KMNO4. So I'm just going to show you our burette setup that we use for the titration, the top to bottom. And at the bottom of this, you can see that we have this valve is how we're going to add the KMNO4 to the titration. So mostly we're going to be focused on what's happening here in the beaker and at the bottom of the burette. So for data that we collect for this lab, you should already have created a data table. Here is some of the information that you're going to need. Okay, so we're gonna do two trials. Um, the mass of the sodium oxalate from my first trial was 0 0.1647 grams. Of course, you would include uncertainties with these numbers. Uh, and the volume of the beaker. So I'm going to stand on a step stool and I'm going to record the meniscus, the volume using the meniscus. So I'm going to say we are starting at 21 point. Two eight. 
milliliters. Okay, so that's my starting volume. And now we are up to about 55 degrees Celsius. And so I'm going to start adding the KMNO4 to the beaker containing the sodium oxalate. And what we're looking for is the titration endpoint. Okay, so I'm not sure how clearly you can see the contents here of our burette. But you can see there from last video, it's very dark purple in color. Okay, dark purple. And we have a colorless solution here in the beaker. And so when I start adding the KMNO4, I'll just add a little bit right now. You can see that burst of pink color. All right. And as it stirs, We're going to see that color slowly dissipate as the KMNO4 reacts with the sodium oxalate. Okay, so you can see we're sort of going to colorless. So we're still stirring and we're still heating and right now the temperature is approaching 70 degrees. Okay, and you can see that that color has now dissipated and so I'm going to continue to add KMNO4 and what we're looking for is that after adding the KMNO4, we see that pink color persist. In other words, it doesn't dissipate when it reacts. That will tell us that the KMNO4 has reacted with all the sodium oxalate that's in the beaker. You saw me add a little bit of water in this process. Whenever you're titrating, it's always okay to add a little bit of deionized water if you need to rinse things down and make sure that they get fully incorporated. Now I know from my calculation um, two that I calculated how much sodium oxalate I should use in order to react about 25 milliliters of my solution. So I'm gonna open up the valve a little bit more and I'm going to add a lot of this solution, almost 20 milliliters, I think because I know that that can safely react with the amount of sodium oxalate that I have here. And so you can see I'm adding a steady stream and the color is immediately dissipating. So just to give you an idea of the volume that I've added so far, the burette reading right now is about 41 milliliters. Okay, and I'm stopping. So you can still see that the color has not persisted. And so I'm going to add some more. And now I get a little bit more cautious because I'm probably approaching uh, stoichiometric quantities of the two amounts. And I can see that that color is persisting just a little bit longer when I add it. I'm at 43 milliliters and I'm gonna stop it and you can see the color is gone. I'm gonna add a little bit more drop-wise at this point. I'm at 44 milliliters, still adding drop-wise. I'm going to stop it right now. And you can see we've achieved a pale pink color. I'm going to put a white background behind it so you can see that. And so that pale pink color, it tells me that I've reached the end point of my titration. I'm going to just remove this from the heat. Actually, I'm going to use some beaker tongs to do that. and I'm going to record the final volume on the burette, which is 44.55 milliliters.
whenever you do a titration, it's important to include qualitative data for each trial that you do. So in this case, my qualitative data is going to be that the resulting solution is pale pink at the end point. So at this point, a student would go on to collect trial two, and, it, and if those first two trials weren't in good agreement, they would go on to ca calculate, uh, to titrate in trial three. So right now I'm going to provide you with some data from trial two so that you can proceed with calculations three and four in the lab. So I'm gonna leave that information there for you. In fact, I'll display both of them side by side in case you're missing any of it. So today's lesson was the standardization of our KMNO4 solution using sodium oxalate. You should have two trials of data for which you should create an appropriate data table and then proceed with your calculations three and four in your lab report. And that concludes part one of the Redox Titration Lab.